a new model of veterinary care, Isthmus Vet Care offers smart services at an affordable price. Here to share more about the business and some tips on preparing our pets for spring is owner and veterinarian, Dr. Mark Siegel. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. <coughs> Before we dive into some of the tips that you're going to provide us today, tell us a little bit about Isthmus Veterinary Care. Sure. So uh, Isthmus Vet Care is a full service small animal vet clinic. Uh, we're located on the near east side of Madison. Um, we've been open for about uh, two years or so um, and things are going great. We're, we're uh, seeing more and more new, new patients from the community every day and um, it's been just a really rewarding experience opening up a, a clinic right near where I live. Uh, how nice. And the yeah. commute's pretty short, I imagine. Yeah, I, I, I get to walk <laughs> to work every day. Oh, that's it's great. lovely. Yep. Wow. Yep. So I mentioned in our intro a little bit about a new model of veterinary care. Smart and sensible veterinary care is your motto. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's kind of our motto slash mission statement. Um, and it means basically, um, so, so we offer you know, the, the best possible care, obviously, for every patient that comes in the door. Um, but we also understand that, that people sometimes need options in regards to their pet's health. Mm -hmm. um, so we believe in you know, having frank, honest discussions with people about what their pet needs and doesn't need. And we really uh, tailor our care um, for every individual patient. You know, it's not cookie cutter medicine. It, it's really individualized and um, you know, we, we really uh, discuss everything and, and get a plan together with, with our clients. Yeah. That's helpful, you know, of course, sharing what our pets need, but sometimes knowing maybe what's optional and yep. what they don't need, kind of like going in to get your car repaired. You might not need this right now, but maybe right. down the line. So that's yeah, really it's very helpful. it's very collaborative. So I always discuss with all of my clients and, and together we come up with a plan. Oh, that's really great. We promised our viewers some tips. So we're, spring is coming up. What should we do to prepare our dogs for springtime? Sure. So with, with spring hopefully coming, uh, it's, it's pretty cold out right. there today. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, you know, especially our dogs, they're going to be outside a lot more. You know, it makes them um, more prone to parasites, infections. Um, so, so probably... Uh, the, the number one thing I, I recommend and, and, and remind people um, for the spring is, is to get to make sure you're on those preventatives. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, most of the dogs in the area are on heartworm and then flea and tick prevention. Mm -hmm. um, ticks are, are the major issue here in Wisconsin. Um, we have multiple types of ticks. They, they carry multiple different types of bacteria. The major one is Lyme, which mm -hmm. most people know about. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I hear from a lot of people with their dogs, you know, oh, we, we stopped the flea and tick prevention in, you know, October or November, and then we like to restart in April or May. But the problem is, you know, ticks don't read the calendar. Um, so, <laughs> they don't. so um, we, we can really see ticks anytime it's above freezing, uh, okay. literally above 32 degrees. Um, so, you know, for example, th this past year, I saw ticks into December. Um, so wow. we, we had a warmer early part of the December um, and, and we were seeing ticks, you know, people were stopping the flea and tick prevention, going up north and still getting ticks. So um, I always tell people, um, you know, usually you're okay December, January, February to be off of the flea and tick prevention, not this year. Um, so make sure you look at the weather, it, you know, if it's solidly below freezing, you know, January, February, usually you're pretty safe. Okay. Um, but what about cats? Do they need those same types of yeah, things? Yeah, cats too. So, yeah. so um, you know, the, the vast majority of my cat patients are indoor only. Um, so sure. it's actually technically illegal to have outdoor cats in Madison. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it, it's, it's not enforced too often, obviously. Um, I, I do generally recommend keeping cats inside, but mm -hmm. realistically, I know there's some indoor-outdoor cats in Madison. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, same thing for, for cats. So, okay. so get back on those, those flea and tick and heartworm preventatives. Really helpful. Yeah. What about vaccinations? Is there anything in particular that we need to do now before spring hits? Sure, good question. Yeah, so, so um, there, there are a couple of vaccinations that are, that are considered optional that, that I, I'll always discuss with my clients. Uh, before the spring. So the, the core vaccines, um, which almost all dogs in the area are on, are, are rabies, distemper, and then kennel cough. Um, so those obviously should be on board all, all year round. Mm -hmm. um, 
the two optional ones, so, so one is a vaccination for something called lepto or leptospirosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so lepto is a bacteria that lives in stagnant water um, that's spread through wild animal urine. Um, so rabbits, squirrels urinating into water. If your dog drinks it, it, it puts them at risk. Got it. Um, so not as critical in the winter, obviously everything's frozen, right. um, but, but for the spring, um, if your dog, you know, does any, any swimming in lakes and ponds or drinking out of puddles, bird feeders, um, they're at risk. It, it's a nasty bug. It, it causes kidney and liver damage. So highly recommended if, if your dog is doing any of those things. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about this. Dr. Mark Siegel, again, is with Isthmus Veterinary Care. We'll be right back with more Talk Wisconsin. <laughs>